Welcome back, and today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. If you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you'll know that I do a lot of my post processing in Photoshop, but because Lightroom has come out with a lot of updates, a lot of the things that you used to only be able to do in Photoshop, you can now do in Lightroom. I've gotten quite a few questions from people asking if I mainly use Photoshop, or if I am just as versed in Lightroom, and if I am, how can you achieve the same result? One of the things I'm going to talk about is the luminance range or using it and really giving you guys a better understanding or a more detailed understanding. In Lightroom, you have the luminance range. In Photoshop, you have the blending options. And before we get into this, let me just show you what I mean. So I'm gonna be using this picture that I made specifically for this video, but don't mind the numbers or anything right now. I just wanna show you the difference. I'm gonna create a curves layer here in Photoshop, and then I'm gonna to go to my layers and then open up my blending options. And I have my underlying layer, and I'm gonna drag this, removing all those highlights I just put onto it by removing them from the blacks. And this is essentially what we have in Photoshop. Excuse me, Lightroom is a bar just like this when it comes to luminance range. So we can see the before, the after, not really affecting the darks. So now let's jump into Lightroom and let me break down what this bar is, how you can best use it, and whether or not you can edit the same way that I edit a lot of my photos in Photoshop, if you can do that in Lightroom now. Back here in Lightroom, I specifically created this black and white image with all these lightness numerical values below to show you exactly how the luminance range works. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna do subject in our masks, and you can see it does a pretty good job. But what we wanna do is go ahead and intersect, and we'll do a luminance range. So once the luminance range is selected, we can do, click a specific point on the fox. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the brightest point in my opinion, which seems to be this side here, or these catch lights here. So let's see how well that does. In this particular box right here, this is our values. So I'm gonna go ahead and do show luminance map. And as you can see with this box highlighted, the number 50 here is what is highlighted. So the color that I selected, the luminance I selected is within the 50 range. This is 50% gray. These two are known as your fall offs or your feathers. So you have your lower fall off and you have your upper fall off. If you bring these in on one another, you can see it removes the feather from the image. The reason feather is so important is because it naturally blends light. We don't see things in such harsh shadows. And even if you look at the lighting here, or even my shadow, as I move closer to the wall, or even here, you can see how harsh the shadow is. As I move further away from the wall, the more feathering happens to my shadow, and that is the light just dispersing. And that is really how we see natural light when we're using natural light, even studio lights. I have my studio light set up in a way that where it's currently positioned, I have a nicer fall off and not such harsh shadows. But if you're really trying to dial in on a specific tone, whether it be blacks, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, or whites, then you can bring those fall off points in and really dial in this center section right here for the brightness or the darkness that you want. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this to 50. And you can see the values right here. So the bottom half right here is set to 50 and the uh, upper part closer to the uh, highlights and the whites is set to 73. Of course, as I move that in and out, that value is gonna change. But I want it at 50 because that's gonna be the easiest. As we feather this out a little bit, it's gonna move out into the highlights more and then we can even feather it towards the blacks. Now, I created the highlights. So I want the highlights to, let's say, I want them to pop a little bit more. So let's go ahead and we'll bring the highlights up 
and then we'll bring our exposure up. I don't want them affecting the blacks or the midtones or the shadows, so I'm gonna remove it. I'm actually gonna bring this box all the way over here. And now it's only going to be affecting the whites. So if I remove that, now we can see the difference that it makes, and it's quite extreme. So you have the amount slider right here. So you can increase it or you can decrease it. It just has a basic underlying standard when it comes to any slider from zero to 30. 30 is usually what you would consider the max if you're not really trained to it. Um, so if you're a beginner just playing around with this, see how well you like it at not going above 30. Or what you can do is you can create three virtual copies of this image. So let's say create a virtual and then create another virtual copy. Now all three of these copies have the same exact setting. So let's go back into mask. We click this, we leave one at nothing. So at complete zero. The other one, let's go ahead and we'll make it 15. And the other one, we will make 30. So now you can actually take these images and compare them and you can see which one you like the best. And you can click F to make them full screen and go back and forth, go back, close this panel, close your panels, really get a good view. And I'd say I like around the 15 to the 30 mark the best. Now, in my opinion, this is done a lot more efficiently and you can get a lot more precise in Photoshop. And just as a quick example, let me show you exactly what I mean. So you can go to curves, bring up your highlights all the way, go back to your layers, open up your blending options, remove them from the blacks, click OK. So now we have our before and our after, and we make this 15. So now we have the Photoshop version and the Lightroom version. Now let's jump into a little bit of dodging and burning. So one very quick way that I usually will dodge and burn photos in Photoshop is I'll take a brush and then I'll either increase the highlights or increase the shadows. And then with a hard brush, I'll make a swipe, feather it out, and then decrease the opacity or the flow. Now that was a lot of information. Let's see exactly how I would do that in Lightroom. So let's go ahead and turn this mask off. Let's create a new mask and we're gonna do a brush. So we only want to affect the shadows. So we already just messed with the highlights with this mask, but let's go ahead and mess with the shadows now. So as far as feather, I do want 100%. I'm gonna leave this size about right here. Flow, let's do about 20%. A quick tip that I learned from working on portraiture or working with models is that when you're dodging and burning skin or people, you want to usually have it be less than 10%. With animals, I usually keep it uh, a keep a flow of between 10 and 20%. And I don't really turn on auto mask. I'm gonna drop my exposure by just 0.5, just enough where you really make a difference or a noticeable difference. And I accidentally deleted my mask, so let's go ahead and do that again. So exposure, 0.5, negative 0.5. And now, as I brush on, we can see before and after. So all the areas that are naturally shadowed, let's go ahead and just mark those real quick. And if you wanna adjust your brush as you go along, you can use the bracket keys. And for time's sake, I'm gonna adjust to 100% flow and just really show you guys what this can do. Okay. So this is our before, this is our after. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to intersect this with a luminance range mask once again. And with our little uh, eyedropper, 
We're gonna click the blacks. And what we wanna do is feather this out as much as possible. So you see, we don't want our box range to be covering up each one of these. We want the box to be within a range of zero to 25. So if we really wanted, we could drag this out here, perfect. And then we can take it into the whites a little bit. Now we turn this off and now we have feathered the blacks within the zero to 25 range all the way through the 100 range. So now they're feathered from the darkest all the way to the brightest, allowing natural fall off to happen. So what we can do is to show you guys just what the amount difference can make. We actually don't need this on. So once again, this is what zero is gonna do, what 15 will do, and what 30 will do. And I will probably even say that 50 is where I would like it. So this is our before, this is our after, and it's just providing a little bit more contrast and a little bit more punch. For a black and white photo, this is okay. I usually like to have my photos with those blacks lifted a little bit because we don't see naturally in pure black, so they can get really crunchy and they can look really processed uh, really fast. And I just said really a lot, but hopefully you got the point. Now this will quicken my post-processing when it comes to what I do in Lightroom if I want small touch-ups, but for me, I just personally love Photoshop. I think it still is a lot more efficient and you can get a lot more particular and you dive into things a lot better than you can in Lightroom just yet. But Lightroom has made so many improvements within the last year. I'm really excited to see what they do in the following years. And I know a lot of people don't have the option to have both Photoshop and Lightroom. And I really think if you were to only get one and you only wanted to do like very basic editing with very minimalistic uh, uh, global adjustments, meaning specific adjustments to, well, global being the whole picture adjustments to very localized adjustments, meaning one specific thing, then Lightroom is the program for you. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like. They really do help out my channel. And if you have anything you would like to add to anything I said in this video, please be sure to put it in the comments below. With it still being winter, spring around the corner and wildlife being very active, go ahead and watch this video next, where I talk about a subject that isn't often talked about here, on YouTube that's really gonna help bring your wildlife photography to the next level.